like sorry continue. continue oh wait what is napoleon uh napoleon oh yeah. it's a what's it called a pig or boar or something like that yeah He's correct he is a pig do you know why he is a pig why? <laughs> um let me phrase that better because God sent him down to this world to become a pig, and so he did become a pig. I suppose so, but in this in this book, it is not God who is writing the story, but George Orwell. Like, why do you think he used pigs to represent <laughs> the people in power? Guessing because pigs represent greed or something in this story. Oh, that is quite true. That is pretty true. So, can do you have any more comparisons to like the animals and their archetypes for humans? Anybody? For example, the sheep. Can you draw a line between the sheep and the people who are the people in real life they represent? I'm randomly choosing somebody again. Shulek. No, don't choose Shulek. He got no group. Right. Okay. Well, um. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The sheep represent the people who follow other people's words without like uh, checking for themselves. Meaning but like, they, uh, yeah, they just follow without like actually knowing what they're going into. That is true. In real life, is there anybody that we can call a sheep? You know, now that we are in 2021, Corona's a thing. And I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers, but can you guys draw a conclusion to who people usually would call sheep? People who follow without thinking. Yeah. Is there anybody in real life who that reminds us of? Or people who just sit there without speaking up. Look, look, look. In this whole group here, how many people have spoken up? Two people come in. <laughs> so the rest, the you rest, are you, are you sheep? Elena. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could say protesters are sheep, some protesters, like the ones that follow behind the people who actually started the thing. Because when it's their turn to speak up, then they, they won't be able to say anything because they're just following the yeah. people who started the thing themselves. Yeah. In, some, in some ways, like the loudest would be the most ignorant. Okay. It is like so, quite paradoxical. So I didn't hear. So what's the conclusion of what's the real life implication, real life example of power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely? I didn't hear. Did anyone give any example? Uh, Benedict gave one. Mm, regarding? Um, no, 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 no. I said what's not, uh, nothing, nothing. What? You're talking about me, ah? No, 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 that was, that was the starting, that was the starting. And after <laughs> I, I rephrased my sentence. Okay, we do not have an answer for this. Can anybody else help us? Emily looks like she wants to say something. I, don't know, I just see her face. Huh? She looks like she got a lot of thoughts also. Emily? Hi. Hi, Emily. Do you have anything to add to this? Do you have an answer for this? Our question, our problem at hand. Uh, I maybe have. Um, I heard of this situation that is in China. That is a. Um, uh, they um. How do I say? Uh, the parents want their kids to um. Like have good grades or something, so they bribe the teachers with um. Uh, Presents, money, cash, or anything else, and then um, 
the one parent see this and then she also follow. And then somehow driving the teacher becomes the, I don't know, normal thing. And then when one parent doesn't want to, um, doesn't want to uh, like donate, donate that. Uh, then they then the teacher will like abuse their power onto their kids, like um scolding them or like hitting them or something. Oh, that that is um okay, but this I think this power tends to corrupt and absolute power uh, corrupts absolutely. Okay, maybe you you need to refer to um the leaders of a country, okay? As in the satire that you have read, the animal farm, okay, is actually regarding uh, leaders and how they, uh, before they become the top leaders, okay, they can promise you anything. They promise to do this, do that, do this, do that, be fair, be just, be this and that. When they have power, and absolute power, like Napoleon uh, and, and his, his pigs, uh, okay, when they have power, they change what they have said and they actually take action to change what they have said. That is absolute power and it corrupts. When they have the, the ability okay, to change something to suit themselves, they do it. Okay? Yeah, but I think this one, this line can like also like give it to a teacher or something. Because, um, how do I say? Uh, the first one, uh, power tends to corrupt. Mm. So, when you die, before you don't have power, la, you can like, think or like say you can be absolute fair and like fair or something. But just not to the whole world, I like, say to some people. But when they got the power, and then like they got used to it and um, they were like tend to abuse the power. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> of course, but if you are relating to uh, teachers, teachers don't have absolute power. It's the, top, the top dogs who have power, the top guns. Is <laughs> that? This story actually relates to um, the top, the leaders of a country. But of course, in uh, other situations like uh, in a school, maybe, or uh, in uh, companies, okay, uh, in, in other places, you can also see some, some sort of corruption, uh, of course. So basically, the quote is stating for people who don't have anybody higher than them to control them. So mm, they yes. the most, uh, what's it called? Ah, absolute power. People who have absolute power. So that is why it's very important. That's the, what do you call that? That's the basis of democracy, where people, people vote their leaders into power and people can remove them, okay? When they feel that uh, they... Uh, where they don't perform, okay, or they are useless, so that they don't have absolute power. Hmm? Okay, hmm. but in communist countries, okay, uh, the leaders have um, absolute power. For example, North Korea, lah, okay. See the example of North Korea? Who is the leader there? Jong Un Kim. Hmm, our dear leader, or who? Can anybody answer that? It's a very simple question. It's trivial, really. Anybody? Yeah, just say Kim Jong Un. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay. Do you still want to dwell on this, or you want to continue with another question? How long do you have? We get more. Uh, what's called points from different questions. Yeah, uh, other questions then can get more points. <laughs> uh, it's Evan's question, so I guess he gets to decide. Okay. Next yeah, one. Move on. What evidence is there that the pigs' intentions after the rebellion might not be in the best interest of all animals? Okay, this one you need to read the book. This one you need to read the book. Then only you know how to answer. Give examples. Okay, I'm going to check on other groups first. Eh? Okay, bye-bye, Pauline. Okay. Who okay. we'll here read the book? 
come and win points for your team because right now group three right. winnings, yeah. Anybody who's read the book, um, put your hand. Oh no, nobody read. Kyra oh my gosh. Oh no, Kyra is group three. I don't want him. Okay, uh, Elena, did you read it? Okay, Rebecca. <laughs> Hello, Rebecca. <laughs> she's not, she's right. pretending to not hear me. Okay. Um, Tisha? Yeah? Hi, did you read the book? Uh, hi. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> then, do you know the basic of what is... What does the book, what's the book trying to say? Since you guys already played the games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a rough idea? Yeah. yeah. Can you share? Wait, the rough idea of what the book's about. Yes. But wasn't that basically from the starting already, the first question? No. Uh, you know. Wasn't that explained from the first question already? Bendy, do you have any opinion on this question? Oh, 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 wait, oh. Um, the once they were elected already, the pigs or something, the conflict for the animal farms started coming up when the animals wanted freedom and equality, but they were corrupted by what's it called. But the the pigs didn't want to give it to them or something. Like, like, like yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. By the way, uh, Felix, what type of t-shirt are you wearing? That's not librarian tea, I'm right? in my grandmother's house right now. I forgot to bring my what's called my grandmother's t-shirt. Sorry. Example of a person that didn't read my reminders. Okay. Does anybody else have any opinion on this question? Okay, from group two, anybody? Carmen, did you read the book? Anyway, no, not Carmen. Hoening. Hello. Warning. Are you summary? Okay, so do you have any opinion on this question? Mm. I think the fact that the pigs is already like symbolically sort of a red flag. Mm. I mean, that's true, but the whole reason why the animalism started was because of Manor, and he's also a pig. So that's kind of It's sad. just that uh, the more power they got, the more they realized they can manipulate everyone. So they just got carried away with it. I, that is the basis of the book. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Thank you, Wenning. Okay, anybody else? If not, I think we can move on to the next question. Anybody? No? Okay, next one. Huh? Okay, so question three. What's your opinion on the sentence from the novel? All animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. Do you think it reflects on the hypocr hypocrisy of the government? Why and how? Anybody want to answer this? So yeah, I see a lot of people smiling. Benedict is one of them. But I don't want Benedict. Benedict keeps talking. That's why you're letting group three win. Emily is also smiling, but Emily is group three also. Hello, group one, group two. I just very friendly. They just like to smile. No, it's <laughs> if, if nobody want to answer, then only we go for Benedict. Okay. Let me see. Calling once, calling twice. Anybody? I think it's quite an interesting question. You don't read mm -hmm. the book, so you. I think you can kind of understand. Jeanette, do you have any opinions? Hello. Hello. Yes, you, Jeanette. I saw you unmute and mute again. Come unmute, talk. 
No, stop. <laughs> stop muting yourself. Come and talk. It's okay, don't be shy. We're all friends here. <laughs> No, she doesn't want to talk. Okay, that's not mind. Uh, okay, let us move on to Benedict. Do you have any opinion on this? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, basically, I think what they're trying to say is that some people are treated much more better than others despite an appearance of equality. Meaning they may say that everybody's equal, but in fact, in the middle of, in the midst of it, some people are treated much more better than others. So in this case of Animal Farm, who would that be? The pigs. They are treated much more favorably in this situation. Even though they promise equality, I guess. Yes, that is very true. Very insightful. Thank you so much. Now let's move on to the other question. How? How can they reflect the hypocrite. How, how is it that they're able to get away with all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others? Why does this happen? Isha, you have an answer? You don't need to read book one, you still can answer. Yeah, at this point, it's, we're just using the book as a basis for a deeper discussion. So it's, it really doesn't matter if you read the book or not, but it'd be good if you did. Uh, can I answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can. Go ahead. Um, I'm guessing that some of the animals after like the rebellion, since they are free from Mr. Jones, they want to seek equality amongst themselves. So once they got that equality that itself, I guess they didn't care that some are treated much more better than others. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Like, because they already got rid of the biggest threat, which was Mr. Jones at that time. So their complacency was eventually their downfall. Yeah, basically. But then they didn't realize that um, things were getting more power, I guess. Until it's to a point where it got out of control. But at that point, it's probably too late already. But they didn't have enough rights to even speak up. That's how yeah, it got because... so badly. Uh, okay, question person. So do you think we have discussed this enough? Yeah, okay, moving on. Okay, so why do you think George Orwell chose animals to represent political figures in the novel? Anybody? Then why you why you don't you guys don't like winning, is it? <laughs> why you you don't answer? There's no wrong answer, okay? Guys? Why are you, just shy? you don't need to be shy. Hey anybody. Okay, I'll call someone. Uh, let me see. Shinyi? Hello. Group one. Hi. Hello. Unmute. She got it. Ah, okay. Hello. Do you have any opinion on this? So no. why this why this uncle that made the book, right? Why did he choose animals? to represent all the political figures. He's interested about animals. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Maybe. <laughs> Probably animals in particular. Me? Uh, yes. You want to talk again? again like... Osla, get more points. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. It's free for all. Um, I'm guessing because in the animal farm thingy, it's much more easier to highlight like the people of the working classes, the people of the government and all that by using different animals. Whereas if you're using a film, like if you're, I don't know how to say it, if he's representing 
these political figures in like let's say human form, then I guess people will get more offended because I don't know how to say it. But animals are way less um chance for other people to get affected, I guess, because animals are you can represent them and yeah. nobody will feel like I mean, yeah, that's the reason that's the reason why so many children's stories are all like animal representative, the sly fox, the stupid cow, I don't know, the ferocious tiger. It's like, just because if you suddenly name the book like the dumb George or something, somebody called George is gonna be like mad or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys read in order to live, but at some point, uh, Yunmi, the author, she really, really liked Animal Farm. It's because of this exact reason. It was just very easy for her to understand, and it's like you know how much she suffered in North Korea, the starvation, the getting out. Yeah, it just, it was so easy for her to understand since it was just like a children's story, a very gruesome children's story, but it was dumbed down to the style of it. Uh, okay. Our time here is done. Um, thank you. Thank you everybody for um, listening to us. That was yeah. really nice. Thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed this whole discussion. Okay, bye-bye. I all the best okay, for your next one. I hope you can participate more. Okay, bye-bye. Why are we still here? Um, because not for hopes. And it tells the story of how she escaped from North Korea and all the hardships she went through to actually get out of there. And then after that, she went to multiple places after that, like for example, China, you know, and she also went to Mongolia, I think. Yeah, she went past the desert, you know. So it, it was a lot of hardships for her to actually like get out of North Korea and finally settling down in the US. And she wrote this book in order to live to talk about her hardships and also shed light on the brutality and also some of the struggles that she faced on the most repressive country on earth known as North Korea. And this all happened before her 21st birthday. Right, quite, quite different, right? So first question I wanna ask you guys is, we all have heard or read about things about North Korea. How does the image you had of the country in your mind, come, how, how does the image you had of the country compare to the description your me gave in her book? Anyone would like to answer this question? Well, guys, if you guys have any, you know, opinions or anything you want to share about, you guys can share about it, you know, it's a perfect time because don't worry, guys, this thing is just for open, we're open for discussions, man. Let's go. Uh, I think it's always been the same since I uh, watched one of her interviews. So, yeah, I think North Korea, you know, has always been like this uh, tyrannical reign by uh, the Kim leaders and like how she describes in the interview like in her TED talks um, it has always been you know that uh, very tyrannical very brutal you know it's like those people are deprived of their basic human rights and so I think it's the same as how she describes in a book yeah that's basically right. how it is okay okay so do you I want to ask Hongmin do you think it has some, you know, like similarity towards other countries or like, uh, you know, like different sort of like dynasties or different things that happened in the past? Do you think it has some sort of similarity? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's like a second Soviet Union. Like basically it's an emulation of like post-World War II Russia kind of uh, regime. So it's um, very much... Uh, 
how do you say, they're kind of like developing, but like developing backwards. And they're kind of like uh, xenophobic in some sense that they always antagonize their enemies. Let's say the Americans, the Japanese, especially South Korea. And so, uh, so far they have yet to, you know, uh, to form any diplomatic relations with any other countries. And, you know, they're still uh, doing some nuclear tests to like bomb the USA. So uh, North Korea, I think it's still gonna be like that for the decades, sorry. I see, I see. Okay, okay. Interesting thoughts on it. Okay. What well, about everyone else? Do you guys have any opinions you guys want to share after hearing Han Win's like opinions or statements? Anyone else? You know, for example, maybe how about Don Zen? You guys have you have any opinions on it? You guys can open your mic, right? You guys can type it in the chat, man. Or does North Korea like if if North Korea were to pull such a thing, uh, such uh, if Malaysia, for example, Malaysia, if Malaysia did the things or like did the way the way of how they rule the country, if Malaysia were to do it exactly like North Korea, what are your thoughts on that? Anyone want to share? Maybe like Grace. Um, sorry, I'm having a meal right now, but I think um, I would, firstly, I'll be really scared. And secondly, I would not know really what to do. But lastly, I think my survival instinct will actually come out and appear to help me go through all of that. And just to survive it, no matter what I have to do. Uh, and I think that, wow, it will be really, really scary and of the unknown you know because now we don't really have much things to worry about since we are not something like how north korea is now but if it really were to happen i think we will all have a really hard time coping and changing our lifestyles yeah okay hey, okay interesting thoughts so do you think if we cannot cope right do you think because uh, do you think it will result in more Malaysians leaving Malaysia or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yes, I think there would be more Malaysians leaving um, Malaysia if we were to be in the same situation as North Korea. And that is considering that um, our country still allows people to leave um, the country. But I also think that there will be people um, who would have that mindset of, oh, I'm a Malaysian. I have to stay in Malaysia to be proud of my own country and all stuff. So I think um, majority of the people would leave definitely to a better country, but there will be some people who would still stay in Malaysia having that mindset. All right, all right, okay. I see here Sarah has also shared that she will defect to another country. Okay, okay, right. Uh, with that, we'll conclude question one, actually. So moving on to question two. Okay, um, so you know in the book, Yeonmi actually says that she was uh, born in this city of Hyesan or Haisan, either one, uh, and it is actually near the border of China. So actually, uh, her, pa her father actually trafficked uh, Chinese-made goods into the black market of uh, North Korea. For example, like clothes, cigarettes, sugar and rice, and then uh, it came to the point where he actually smuggled even stolen metals in North Korea into China. So, yeah, uh, and he was eventually arrest arrested and sent for um, forced labor camp. Yeah. So even though they knew the risk, so why do you think your niece's parents continued the smuggling process? Uh, because they wanted to give the children a much better life than what they are currently living in. Okay, does anyone have any other answer to this? Actually, I might want to ask if you, the, the way you said, right, they want to give a better 
uh, like a better life. So let me put you like another scenario whereby if I were to steal so that I can raise my children because I have no money and I have no way of getting a job. Do, so do you think it's morally right or morally wrong for the police to arrest the person? It kind of depends what you're stealing really for me to like for, if, for example if you're stealing something like food, I mean I mean, it, uh, I mean if you're stealing something like a piece of bread or something, then you know the I believe the police shouldn't catch you. But uh, if you're doing some if you're uh, doing something as like a bank heist or some bank heist or something, then of course you should get arrested for something like that. But yeah, that's my thoughts. So do you think the smuggling process of the uh, your and me's parents is that a bad case or do you think it's like uh, something that they need to do? I mean, because North Korea, they don't really have that much. Uh, they don't really have that much uh resources to get from. So, like, but, you know, even stuff like sugar is really rare there. So, I mean, it's I mean, and it's not like they it's not like they have constant supply of sugar. So. It's technically not legally correct, but it could be morally correct. Okay, nicely done. Um, so right, uh, so actually this smuggling process was, um, in my opinion, this would be because yeah, uh, the father actually wanted to provide a better life for the whole family, and because you know they they were in a they were in a very tough spot lah. You don't get very well paid jobs in North Korea in uh, yeah you don't you don't exactly get very well paid jobs in North Korea, and uh, in the story they actually mentioned that you know Yeonmi is not the only child. She actually had another sister with her, and uh, yeah, times were tough for them, and he wanted to provide something. And the father just thought, you know, he had to he had to take this risk to actually provide uh the family with at least food on the table every time, every day. Yes. <clears throat> so uh do you want to go back to the next question? Is she anyone else want to share their opinions? We are open for discussion. Oh, Grace, okay. Yeah, so um, I think I kind of agree with Iman and uh, Jeffrey what they say just now. And um, I believe desperate times come for desperate measures. So Yomi's parents and their whole family were just so desperate to the point they would do something that is not what they would normally think is correct. And I'll agree, it's not correct to smuggle things, it's not correct to steal things. But because they were so desperate and they just wanted to survive, they just wanted to live. So in their opinion and what they thought that time was in order to live and in order to survive as a family, they had to steal things and smuggle things. Yeah, so thank you. Okay, okay, right. We'll be moving on to the next question. Okay, hi, we will be discussing about uh, question three. So it's about uh, strangest part of North Korean life in your opinion. So um, of course we will know uh, we have not a lot of strangest part of North Korean life in our um, before, like um, no fashion or then poverty, um, proper, communist propaganda and old de decades technology. So uh, anyone here wants to share like what's their strangest part of North Korean life that they have read before or have seen before. Anyone? How about maybe Eon or Lian or Tiffany? You guys have any uh, ideas on it? Okay, wait. Hoin Hoin said they had to attend some sort of discussion every week to repent their sins. Okay, yeah, that's correct. Okay, Eon, do you want to share your opinion? Or Lian, anyone? It, it can be not from this book or so. 
just feel free to answer. There's no right or wrong answer, yeah, guys. Um, I think the book mentioned that in order to go to school, they have to collect, they have to give the school some, um, either food or some things they need. And then if you don't, then it's like they charge you or something. But I think it's very strange because there were still kids and then they still need to like go and collect these stuff and they are forced to even though they have no money and the school is like, they are not like bothering or anything. I think that's weird and very, um, very bad. Okay, I find that very strange also. That's a very good point. Okay, anyone else wants to share their point of view? Two more minutes. Okay, then uh, we will move on to the next question. Uh. Yeah, actually, they can ask more. They can ask one more. Okay. Uh, anyone wants to share, like the last one? Wait, wait, I mean, like one more person who wants to share. I think it's weird because why they want to restrict their citizens' life and they are very cautious of the other countries. Oh wait, uh, that we do know much about them. Okay, yeah, correct. Wait, I have to assign someone. Yeah. Hey, Jaden, you can go to the next oh, question. Okay, okay, okay. Question four. Okay, question four, it's gonna, what do you think of the statement, but as I began to write this book, I realized that without the whole truth, my life would have no power, no real meaning. What do you think of this statement? It's quite interesting, actually, the statement. We'll have... How about Joakim? Joakim, you seem like you have a lot of things you want to share. Yeah, um, Joakim. That's because she feels like she has a story to tell and that like, she wants it to be the truth. Huh? She doesn't want to change or sugarcoat anything because that's what her life is. Huh? Ooh, okay so uh, i'll summarize it is like she because she wrote the book because she wanted to share this and then also portray and then showcase the brutality of north korea is that what you're saying uh, okay 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 very interesting how about maybe ashley yeah Ashley, you want to share about this statement Ashley, can you, are you there? You want to share about this statement, Ashley? Or me? Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Oh, you're not really sure. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, how I interpret it would be, it would be something like what Jo Kim says, because when she wrote the book, she realized that the whole truth, without the whole truth of her, of her life, it, she would have no power, no real meaning. Because, okay, a, back, a little bit of background is she became an activist, a human rights activist after she managed to escape North Korea. So in ironically, because of her very tough childhood, very... Uh, very rocky life she managed to use her life as an example to actually um, sh shed light on North Korea and also just basically ensure that try to start like human rights campaigns so that everyone can get like a, uh, get like the, the rightful rights that they deserve yeah so uh, anyone else want to share? Well, yeah, actually, I like to, I like to uh, agree with Jaden, like with and Joe Kim also, like without uh, without her going through all this uh, like her life wouldn't be her life story wouldn't be so inspiring. Like imagine I told you, uh, I wrote this book, I go to school every day, I go to tuition every day. How how inspiring would this be? It's it's just the same thing as you've been through. But then, 
Yeonmi actually, uh, she had to go through so much hardship to escape North Korea and gain her own freedom. So I think she, she's trying to point out like, uh, this, this story of hers would be very inspiring for uh, not only those North Koreans but also other people out there who desire freedom. Yeah. Okay, okay. Good point, Jeff. All right, nicely done. So, does anyone have something different, actually? Like, maybe you think that you don't agree with us and you want to, like, fight back. You can, you guys can fight back, you know. We don't mind. We just want to hear your opinions, actually. Maybe, like, Bridget or, like, Kaylin, Donzen, any of you guys want to share with us? You guys can talk about, like, how about you think, you know. Or maybe Leanne. Leanne, do you guys, do you have any opinions on it? Oh, you don't really have opinions on that. Well, <laughs> okay. Well. Do you feel that? Do you feel that? Okay. This author, she wanted to share the whole truth and not leaving out anything. Okay. So that whatever she shared would be beneficial to other people. And how would it benefit other people? How would the real, the whole truth benefit other people? You might want to share? What do you think? How about Grace? Grace, you look like you have some, some things on your mind. Yeah, I do, but I'm eating, so I don't be impolite, you see. Oh, okay, okay. You take your time. Uh, once you're done, you got you can share your uh, ideas on it. But you don't have much time. Tyra already announced you only have like I think five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have six more minutes left. Yeah, yeah. Take your time, Grace. Uh, you can start sharing a bit. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh my god. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Um uh, actually if actually it's okay. If you want to share, you can also type it in the chat. We'll be moving on to the very last question, actually. Okay. Uh the last question is which part of the book had the biggest impact on you? Yes. Uh, we'll give it to someone who hasn't told us something before. Maybe Ashley? Ashley, what, what was the biggest impact it had on you? You didn't remember that you're supposed to give points to the groups uh, whose members took yeah, part yeah, in the discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're tracking, we're tracking. Mm, yeah, for example, actually, yeah, what was the biggest impact you had when you read the book? Don't be shy, we can all share, you know. For example, you can say, like, how your means experience, like, it, like, shocked you, for example. It, like, oh, which part of it shocked you the most? Which part of it was, like, so uh, unbelievable to you? Okay, people who have already shared can also share because you're getting points for your group. You don't have to like go round robin. Everybody has to talk, you know. Yeah, come on, guys. You guys get points for this. So if you guys don't share, you guys won't get points, actually. If you guys really have any, if, if you guys have anything on your mind, just say it, man. We're, 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 open, we're open to discussion, man. You can say like, for example, uh, yes? Uh, I think... Uh... Her whole journey and experience in China and going to China not knowing what she was going to face and getting tricked and her first time experiencing what human trafficking is and then um, and many other things. Yeah, and I, especially when her father went to China and he fell sick and what really um, struck me was the fact that he kept saying that he was a burden. And it was so sad because like no one should ever feel that way. But in that situation itself, they were also helpless to each other and they couldn't send him to a hospital. So of course, it would be normal for him to feel that he's being a burden. But yeah, I just felt really sad about that. Okay, okay. So uh, Grace, well, with what you said, right? Because in the past, in our past history, we also have like slavery and also human trafficking and all that going on. So technically, uh, human trafficking and slavery are sort of cor they are, they correlate with each other, right? So, do you think that uh, 
with, with all these, like from, from, from then until now, how do you think like we can solve this problem actually? Because this thing is something that us modern human beings, since we're already in 2021, we should have like some sort of control over it. But to be honest, we're still not making much progress actually. I honestly think that um, in order for this whole situation to change, people themselves have to have the will to change. Because if you yourself think that it is right to be having slaves and sell people for money and all those stuff, then I don't think anybody can persuade you otherwise if your opinion is so strong like that. So it's always um, starting from the man in the mirror. So thank you. Hmm. But I feel that uh, if it's only the man in the mirror, it's not really enough. What we need is a lot of political will. You know it's political will? Like you need the help of politicians to actually... Not, 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 uh, not really politicians. Uh. It's just called political will. But then it's the, the rule, you know, the rule of government and how they carry out. Do they actually um, crack down on, on this type of, uh, you know, businesses or illegal operations or not? Or do they keep an eye closed, okay? And they receive benefits from this sort of businesses. So first of all, the, the, the government must uh, clean itself up. Then only it can start cleaning the rest of the country. Mm, yeah, but what, what, teacher, what do we do about like, people? for example, some countries, they are like, uh, government isn't actually like powerful enough or like, So we'll start. Hi guys, welcome to our book discussion. My name is Diviana and facilitators here are Rachel, uh, Fujit and Alicia. So we will be discussing the novel called Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott and the genre is children's literature. So I'll be giving you a brief summary of the Little Woman to spark your memory in case you've forgotten the main plot. And whoever not yet read the book, right, I strongly recommend you listen to my summary properly so later you can answer the questions, okay? So this is a story of four sisters, Mac, Joe, Beth, and Amy March, who are raised in genteel poverty by their loving mother, Marmy, in a quiet Massachusetts town while their father serves as an army chaplain during the American Civil War. They befriend this guy called Laurie, Theodore Lawrence, the lonely grandson of a rich old man next door. The vital force of the family is Joe, a headstrong tomboy who is the emotional center of the book. In this course of the novel, beautiful and vain Meg marries Laurie's tutor, who is John Brooke, and then she starts her own family. Then we have quiet, sickly Beth, who dies from the scarlet fever. And we have Amy, who is the artistic one, who marries Laurie after he is turned down by Joe. And finally, our tomboy Joe marries Professor Bear, whom she meets while living in a boarding house. And together, they set up a school for boys. So that's basically the whole story. Yeah. Now we will move on with the questions. OK. So the first one, right? This is the easiest question, okay? So I'll expect you all to volunteer. So who is your favorite character in Little Woman and why? Which character do you move with and why? So any takers? Anyone? It's so easy. You can choose any of the sisters, the mom, Laurie, anyone. And then you just tell me your reason. Come on, this is so easy, man. If you can't answer this right, how are you going to answer the rest of the questions? So, anyone? I'll give you five seconds. If no one volunteers right, I will choose because we are running out of time. Okay, seems like no one, right? I would like to choose um, Tiffany To. Tiffany, are you there? Yeah. Yeah, hi. Okay, so 
Who's your favorite character? The best March. Hmm. Okay. Why? Well, she's just like very kind, sweet. You know. So does that mean you're also kind and sweet? <laughs> no. Because you think <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. So any part like of her character... Oh, okay. So any part of a character you relate to, which part? You tell me more specifically. Um, probably like... Uh, I'm not sure actually. Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Okay. Now we'll go to the next person, um, Hanwin. I want a male's opinion on this. Yeah, on. hi. Who's your favorite character? Uh, I think Joe. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, yeah, I like from the brief uh, summary that I read online, I think she's, you know, you know, like what people say, the unconventional woman, that she uh, demands for more freedom. And, you know, she's the type who wants to, uh, basically have access to uh, more education and basically her hobbies consist of reading and writing which is kind of like uh kind of like female empowerment i suppose at those times mm -hmm. i agree with you she's yeah. like a flower i like your opinion <laughs> correct correct you know correct oops anything is correct but yeah that is true um next we will have lian lian Fua. are you there Yes. Yeah. So who's your favorite character? Um, I I go with Beth too, because mm -hmm. sacrificial and she sees like the she tries to see the good um the best in everyone and like how she got a scarlet fever, which was very sad, but she helped um the family and yeah, and was very kind to other people also. Mm, so um do you also relate to the part where she sees the best in other people? So do you also see the best? Um, kind of. Like, I try, but not as good as that. But I try to see the best. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so should we move on to the next question? Question two. Does little woman accept or challenge gender stereotype. Explain your answer. Anyone would like to share their thoughts on this question? Jessica, what do you think? Hello? Jessica, are you there? Can you all hear me? Yes, can hear. What about Mandy? What's your opinion on this question? Um, I'm still thinking about it. What about Grace? Oh yeah, they do definitely challenge um, gender stereotypes in little women uh, because normally in the olden days, men will be the provider and the main income of the family. But as we know in little women, their dad wasn't around to provide for them. So the four girls and the mom have to find ways themselves to provide for themselves and I think that's amazing because considering how the old days last time women must be married off to men if they don't have a main man for their own income in their family so I think that's really amazing and another thing is uh Joe she writes plays and normally in the olden days or so women don't really know how to write read and they don't learn that much, especially they don't go to school since. So I think it's really wow that she knows how to write. And I think it's amazing and I applaud her for that. 
Yes, I agree with you. Thank you for sharing this very detailed explanation. What about others? Ayman? Yeah. Do you think little women accept or challenge gender stereotypes? I think like they challenge gender stereotypes because like uh women's you usually like, uh, if you according to stereotypes women are like weak like not like uh like weak like that like weak something like that uh, if according to the stereotypes but the story like it challenges that belief and uh, it challenges that belief and shows that women can also do uh it can also uh women does not have that Basically, they do not need to have to conform to the gender stereotypes. Yes, okay, thank you. We'll proceed to the next question. Okay, so the next question is... Okay, so how do you feel about Amy burning Joe's book and why? Let's start with the first section first. How do you feel about Amy burning Joe's book and why? And also, do you think Joe would have forgiven her so soon if Amy hadn't fallen through the ice when they went skating? So, any volunteers before I call out names? People, please volunteer. If you volunteer right, you get points, you know, and then you can help your group members. Um, I think it was a really irrational thing to do. Because she did it out of anger. I'm quite sure she didn't really mean to hurt Joe or destroy her book necessarily. She just thought of what would be the worst way to make Joe feel angry, like how I'm feeling right now. So at that moment of anger, she was irrational and decided to burn her book. And I think that Joe probably wouldn't have forgiven her so quickly if Amy hadn't fallen through the eyes. Because um, she also has feelings too, obviously, and she probably would still get mad about it. But I think um, after like maybe a few weeks or a few days, she would probably have forgiven her. That's true. Can you relate to Amy about being upset with Joe? Hey, sorry, can you relate to Joe about being upset with Amy? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, disagreement with my family, <laughs> obviously. Okay, okay, thank you. Anyone else want to volunteer? Anyone? Or I call people? Okay, I guess I'm gonna call people. Let's see, let's see. Who do we have? Um, Jessica! What do you think, Jessica? Are you there, Jessica? Jessica, Jessica. Okay, while we wait for Jessica, Joe Kim, come, tell me, how do you feel about Amy burning Joe's book? And do you think Joe would have forgiven Amy so soon if she didn't fall through the ice when they went ice skating? Come, Joe Kim. Hello, Joakim. I know you're there. I saw you. Come on. <laughs> Don't be shy. Jessica, little, I need you to answer also, ah. Jessica. Joakim, come. Tell me. I'm not lagging, right? Am I lagging? No, you're not. Okay. Joakim, Mari, Mari. Berikan jawapan anda. Hello, Joakim. Yo, Joakim, are you there, ah, Joakim? Did you leave? Joakim, why did you leave? Oh no, am I that scary? Okay, now mind, it's okay. Jessica, Jessica, come answer me. Joakim, you're back. Lagging just now. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I thought you were scared of me. Okay, now my come tell me what's your answer, Joakim? Uh, 
on one hand i can see why amy would try to do something like that to draw uh she is still young so she wouldn't understand how she she's learning on how certain things work huh? and in a way i i think i would have done something similar like that if i was her age and if one of my brothers did something i didn't like but on the other, it was a bit irrational for her to do it, and I think she should have thought that things through instead of blindly just taking revenge. And for the second question, I think uh, I don't think Joe would have forgiven her so soon as well, because like Amy, she's also still in, and she's a lot of growing up to do, and I don't think, and she doesn't seem like. so quickly unless it okay thank you thank you Joachim for your opinion um <clears throat> I I think most siblings will agree with this lah, okay because you know we all get into arguments like sometimes and then you feel very angry at your sibling and then you do something you regret but i do think at the end of the day um you will still forgive each other because you you know you love each other and stuff so yes thank you joking for your answer where is jessica miss jessica hello jessica are you here uh, jessica Okay, now my urgent. How next question, please? Jessica, you're gonna be the first person to answer this question, yeah, Jessica. In chapter one, Marmy reads a letter from Mister March in which he exhorts the girls to fight their bosom enemies bravely. For Joe, her enemy was her temper. For Amy, it was her vanity. What would you consider to be your own bosom enemy? And have you discovered a way to manage it? So you don't need to read the story to be able to answer this question, okay? So. I would like to ask Jessica, Miss Jessica, are you there? <laughs> if you're not there, right? Um, actually, I think you're not there. Never mind, uh, I'll just move on to Isabel. Hello, Isabel, are you there? Can you answer this question, please? Bridget, you're next, uh, Bridget. Isabel, are you there? Isabel, Isabel not here also. Ah, uh, do hi all these people. Bridget, are you there? Yo guys, I know you're very tired, but all of us, right? Especially the facilitators, we have been talking since morning. Okay, <laughs> so please cut us some slack and. Be cooperative. You don't want to answer, the least you can do is just type in the chat, I don't know, or, you know, I don't want to answer. And we can just move on instead of waiting for you. Jessica, Isabel, Bridget, are you there? Okay, you're not there. I'll move on. Uh, Siti Sarah, can you please answer this question? Siti Sarah? Did I pronounce your name correctly? <clears throat> Hello, Siti. Oh, you shake your head. You don't want to answer. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you understand the question? But you don't want to answer. Wow, okay. Okay, Ashley, you want to answer? Ashley Young. Lack of confidence, I think. Okay, me too. I also lack of confidence. So what do you think, like how do you discover a way to manage it? Okay, it's all right. Um, thank you, Ashley. Honwin, my bestie. Thank you, Honwin. Lack of self confidence. I'm sure. Actually, you want to talk, ah, uh, Honwin? You want to unmute and talk? Yeah, sure. Yes, come on, let's go, Honwin. Yeah. So speaking of self confidence, right? I think uh, most of us can relate to this because, yeah, I mean, sometimes when we 
uh, when we're so well prepared to do something, but then at the end, when we're about to like present it in front of everyone, it will turn out to be a disaster. And then we'll be like uh, very panicking, even right when we are talking about it. So like, uh, I think it's something that can be changed, lah, but you know, it also takes some uh, willpower within one to make that change. So yeah, just practice more uh, to speak in front of people more frequently and you know, don't be scared of failure. Yeah. Spoken very well, Hongmin. Spoken very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree with everything you said because, you know, I'm sure all of us at some point of our lives, we have lack of self-confidence. But thank you, Hongmin, for sharing this. Thank you very much. Anyone else want to share before we move on to the next question? Anyone have anything you want to say? Xia Ion, Lian, you have anything you want to share? Calling once. Oh, um, Lian, yes. Let's go, let's go, let's go. For me, I think I can be quite judgy at times. Like, I don't say it out loud, but I think it in my heart. And then, like, I know it's very bad because you can't be, yeah, you know, judgy. And I haven't exactly found a way, but I'm still working on, like, maybe um, reading articles or books about it. So, yeah, let's not be judgy, everybody. <laughs> I think a little bit of judgment in this world will be okay, you know, like not too judgy, yes, I agree, but a bit is not bad either. So thank you, Lian, for sharing. Okay, let's move on to the last question. How you want to take over or should I? Yeah, I, I can. Uh, okay. What scenes from Little Women linger in your mind long after you have closed the book? Uh, please elaborate. <sighs> it's quite easy, actually any scenes so um so any volunteers mm, i guess no um cp sarah would you like to try no you can just go google out also can right? i don't mind so <laughs> seriously <la. laughs> very easy any scenes uh is so, is can also I there's no right and wrong. Okay, then never mind then. Uh let's move on. Let's see who else who else. Tiffany? Wait, are you there? Never mind. I think she will be. Um who else? Isabel. Hello, hello. Are you there? I just realized every one of you uh turn off your cameras. So many of you. Um Isabel, hello. When Joe turned down Lori and then ended up marrying Amy. Okay. Oh uh, what why why oh okay. Is there more explanation? Do you have any more? Um, it's okay. Uh, I'll continue. Let's see who else. Ion, are you there? Jeez, everyone's gone. Um, who else? Ah, let's see here. Uh, let's call again the same person. Um, Ayman, how about you? What uh, which scene uh lingers in your mind after you're reading your book? I'm, a, I'm not so sure. I forgot. I, I forgot about the book. It's okay. Um, who else? Uh, let's see. Is Ashley Young there? Yeah. Okay. Continue. Let's go. Oh, uh, what scenes from the Little Women in this? Oh, hello. When Beth died. Can you say again? 
when Beth died. Oh, okay. Any more? I think that was, that's one of the scenes that I really remember. Yeah. Um, yes, I saw some um, you know, right? Um, let's see who else. Yen. What do you think? Um, same as Ashley, when Beth died, I was pretty sad. Like, I uh, knew she was gonna die, but after it was written out, she's gonna die, I was like, oh. Oh, she really died. <laughs> and yeah, I remember it after I finished the book. Yeah, I was pretty uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, understand. Um, I guess let's let's move on then. Oh, wait, let's move on then. Question six, lah. Let's go. Um, I think I can do it. Uh, in what ways did Mister March absence shape the girls' behavior, behaviors, and aspirations? Um, anyone to anyone answer? Is Kayleen there? Hello, hello, Kayleen Wong. And everyone gone. Hi. Um, oh, hi. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Um, in what ways? <laughs> in what ways did Mister March absent shape the girls' behavior and aspiration? Mm, I think his absence made a lot of them have to grow up really quickly and try to figure out how to navigate the world by themselves. Okay. Um, Wei Xin. Hello, are you there? Mandy. Ho Wei Xin Mandy. Hello. Wei Xin Mandy. Uh, this group, everyone got it. Um, Jessica. I fall asleep already. Jessica also? Are you back? Uh, how about Bridget? Bridget O. Okay, never mind then. Uh, let's see. Uh, Grace, would you like the answer? Uh, I think um, with Mr. March's absence, the girls became more independent and mature as people because um, their father wasn't there to um, sort of give them money, I guess. And so they had to learn how to strive and earn on their own. Yes. Okay. Uh, that's a good one. Um, Han Win, how about you? Yeah, I think I would agree with uh, Grace uh, more or less because uh, technically when you lose your, you know, when your family loses its uh, pillar of support, you would um, gradually have this kind of survival instinct so that, uh, you know, even when women back then were not told to provide for their family, but then they would have to do so so that they can support their family and then, you know, they would have enough money and food to live on. So yeah, technically. Okay, that's okay. Not bad. Okay, 